Hello, everybody, and welcome to EBA Sports, the show, creating content for high-level athletes using advanced videography. My name is Ryan Ketchum, your host, and we are currently here at the EBA Sports studio, and I'm joined alongside one of the top players in the nation. 24-7 Sports has him ranked as the number one all-purpose back in the country, a five-star running back, going to be playing his junior year at Modern Day High School. Please welcome Raleigh Brown. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So being here, obviously, you're transferring to Modern Day High School. You used to play ball at Edison High School up in Stockton, California, your hometown. Now you're going to be a junior coming in to one of the top two programs in the nation almost every single year. How are you feeling just joining this Modern Day crew? I just feel excited. Can't wait to get mm -hmm. this work in big level. Definitely. And you mentioned big level. Yeah. Uh, you guys back at Edison. You, you weren't a team that everybody just rolled over. You're still in the top 120 in California. You were uh, about a thousand in the nation as well. So you were still, you know, a formidable team, but now coming to where you're open division, you're playing against almost teams that have an entire starting lineup that's going division one. How are you preparing yourself over this off season to step up to that next level? Uh, just training more, just, just getting mentally ready. Mm -hmm. Getting ready for college too, so just a big step. Mm -hmm. Now the number one all-purpose back, you were able to get that right after your sophomore season. I mean, it's just pretty ridiculous with you know you still being an underclassman and being able to get that award. So what has kind of been some tricks that have helped you get there? Kind of some training regimens that maybe some other players could use to kind of get up to that same exact level. Well, I don't got any tricks. <laughs> I just do regular training, yeah. just work hard, and just. Isn't come with it. Mm -hmm. Now, with big time athletes, there sometimes is a moment where they kind of know they're a little different than everybody else, where they're exceeding that competition. So, what was kind of that moment for you, and how did you kind of just ride that to continue to elevate your game where you're just that much a couple steps ahead of everybody else? Uh, just in high school, when I just mm -hmm. started as a freshman uh, on varsity, so that just brought my confidence up too so mm -hmm. that helped me a long way yeah so starting as a freshman on varsity even the year before in eighth grade uh, you said you received your first offer with byu so yes. how, how did it feel already getting that college recognition you obviously knew that you were good and you were a you know a big time player but actually getting a college to look out at you even before you play high school ball how did that kind of feel and how was it just knowing you going very, into that uh, it was very exciting i, I wouldn't i didn't know i was gonna get a Offered out early. Mm -hmm. I knew I was good, but not that good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was exciting though. Mm -hmm. You're a Max Preps All American as well. Uh, obviously, that's you know a pretty high honor. And uh, what did you kind of do? That's maybe a little bit different. You said that in your freshman year you started at varsity, but to be able to excel maybe even at the next level to be able to get that recognition. What did you do kind of during that off season that kind of elevated you to that next level? Just training a lot, like two times a day almost. Mm -hmm. Like field work, weights on the same day. So mm -hmm. got me prepared a lot. Definitely, and I know that you have done a lot of camps. You've done a lot of college camps throughout your time. So going up against that high level competition, uh, how did that kind of help you as well? Because I know a lot of guys say that when they go to those competitions, suddenly it does elevate their game. They know that they could play against those other high level athletes. So what did that do for you playing at those competitions and excelling? It just helped my game better, get me, get me better. So mm -hmm. that's why I like going to them. They get me better and other players. Mm -hmm. So it's just a great thing. It seemed like you've been pretty quick uh, basically your whole entire life. I know there was a story uh, back in preschool when you were four or five, your family had a barbecue on a trip to Los Angeles. And uh, your great aunt said you were nonstop running and that you should get a Nike endorsement with that speed. <laughs> so uh, have you always just kind of been a quick guy? Yeah, uh, my, I started. My first sport was track, so mm -hmm. I've always been fast. Yeah. Then I just started flag football. I like the football. Mm -hmm. and just stick with it. Mm -hmm. And with track, how do you think that or was able to help you with that speed or just kind of that mentality to use in football with having, instead of just football training, I know a lot of people do multi-sports, so how did it uh, kind of affect your game? Track helped a lot with football. Mm -hmm. Speed kills, so <laughs> it helped a lot, so. For I sure. Kind of love it too, so. 
Mm -hmm. And what are you, kind of your some some of your favorite players to uh, watch? I know you said DeAnthony Thomas was one of your favorite players to watch highlights for. Yeah. So who are kind of your favorite players and what do you look for to try to maybe manipulate out on the field, uh, duplicate I should say, out on the field to uh, kind of use? Um, DeAnthony Thomas, like you said, playmaker. Yeah. But uh, his college tape is one of the best best tapes. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be like uh, St. Quan Barkley. I like how he play. I play like him. Some of his uh, highlights. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, Saquon, definitely. He's, I mean, just annihilating defenders, it seems like, with his size. And uh, I know when you were uh, also getting recruited, uh, going back to, uh, you know, your college recruitment, when you got your USC offer, you said, you know, that was kind of a, a big step for you as well with getting some from a Pac-12 school. So mm -hmm. getting things from schools that you watch on television that you see their history, uh, where they're just, you know, getting national championship after national championship, like Alabama mm -hmm. as well. How does it feel knowing that a college that is that nationally known is looking for you? Uh, I feel great. Just, I mean, I'm getting higher and higher on the level, so getting mm -hmm. closer to it. So yeah. I just got to keep working. Now you mentioned back in freshman year how when you started on varsity, that's how you knew you were kind of an elevated player. Mm -hmm. But back in your South Stockton Vikings youth football days and kind of going back there, uh, when you were uh, playing, you know, middle school and elementary school, uh, what was kind of your mindset going into there and uh, how were you able to kind of excel against the competition? Maybe not knowing how good you are just yet, but how were you able to excel? I was just having fun. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I wasn't really thinking about college football like that mm -hmm. during when I was playing a little league, but I was just having fun and mm -hmm. just out of nowhere, it just went up. Yeah, and just having fun. I mean, that's what sports is all about, yeah. pretty much. Uh, when you get to the you know the bread and butter of it. So, mm -hmm. uh, back when you were only able to play flag football, your mom was saying that uh, you know tackle football. She didn't want you to get hit. When you actually got that first hit and were able to get back up and actually get in the groove of things. How did that feel and how did it just kind of motivate you to kind of excel? Uh, it motivated me a lot. Mm -hmm. Hey, get back up, gotta keep going. Right, right. Yeah, so that helped a lot for sure. Mm -hmm. Now your hometown of Stockton, uh, you were up there, you were going to uh, high school there obviously and now down here in Southern California. How was it kind of being away from that? Uh, you know, Stockton area, obviously when you go to college, you're most likely going to be away from that area as well, but how are you kind of transitioning into that? Well, that's a good thing, because all you, all down here I do is just focus on sports and school, so yeah, ain't nothing else, so mm -hmm. it's a good thing. And focusing on sports and school, uh, a lot of players have a little bit of an issue kind of still maintaining those academics when they have high level athletics. Yeah. But with you personally, what do you do to make sure that you have enough time for both of those and be able to have a focus on each? Uh, I just make sure I get my work done in class. I feel like take it home and do it. Because mm -hmm. you take it home, you'll be up all night. <laughs> so I just try to get it done faster. Yeah, I mean, especially being athletics, you're going to do it all night, especially yeah. after all those practices you have to put in. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So academics, obviously, something important. What would you kind of suggest to somebody, though, that maybe is a little bit younger, maybe at the same stage as you, that is having a little bit of trouble at that? What would you kind of say to focus on or to try to have the mentality to actually focus on both and still be able to succeed? Uh, just study a lot and just get it done in class. Mm -hmm. so. You would be easy, it'd be easy. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, and uh, with your uh, recruitment process going, I know you just keep getting offers and offers. I mean, 24-7 Sports had you over 30, they had you at 32, so yeah. with just having all of that attention uh, coming your way, have you been able to still maintain and yourself still maintain your humbleness as well and kind of just do exactly what you do instead of focus on maybe those bright lights of everybody knowing your name? Yeah, uh, I just, Keep working. I don't really focus on offers like mm -hmm. all that. I just just keep working and keep pushing mm -hmm. and just ignore that and act like the offer is not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right, and that keeps you grounded a little bit so that you're just able to focus on yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I know back at Edison, uh, there was a coach that uh, you were working with, Coach Guyton, mm -hmm. that uh, he said you would just run through opponents like water. Uh, is running so uh, <laughs> yeah that was a direct quote from him with uh, that you would run through opponents just like water uh, was running so uh, with having that ability and coaches kind of seeing that what what is kind of 
uh, the way that you're able to do that and kind of the, the way that you're able to be able to focus on that kind of one-on-one -on -one matchup with the defender and size him up and be able to get past him. Uh, it's just God's gift. Yeah. And yeah, it's just talent really, but it's just speed too. So speed mm -hmm. get away with everything most like. So yeah, that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Now uh, with your speed, uh, obviously, you know, people have to train to be able to get faster and some people kind of already have uh, you know that speed that uh you know just have that killer instinct yeah. in them but uh with you personally with your speed how have you been able to kind of just get quicker and quicker and be able to focus on that what have you kind of focused on routine wise or workout wise to be able to get quicker and faster uh, i'm just actually fast though but mm -hmm. to keep to maintain it i do a lot of uh band work so we just resistance to make me like need to get me faster basically mm -hmm. yeah now I know something that's going on right now, obviously the COVID-19 pandemic, that's kind of stopping the season from happening this fall, at least in Southern California. If you don't know that the CIF Southern section, they put out a report that the season is actually going to begin on January 8th of 2021 and practices obviously begin before that. But uh, while you're here uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, there's obviously classes that are still going to happen. So how has it been for you in the last part of uh, last year of your sophomore season with academically and now kind of this first part they're going into modern day that you're focusing on to kind of stay active with the classes even though you're not in the classroom even though you kind of have to have everything at home uh, it's, it's, it was difficult at first you yeah. know distance learning but I got used to it and just and just got to it but it was at first it was a little struggle right right yeah because it was new mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and I know the distance learning, you were mentioning how one thing that you would say to somebody is to get everything done in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously that might not be uh, achievable now yeah, with now. most classes. So how would you say uh, your focus is still during this time? As you mentioned, it was kind of hard in the beginning, but uh, how is your focus still on school and still getting everything done when uh, you maybe have some other pressures outside and you're at home in a comfortable position? Yeah, just, just stay on top of it. Stay on top of it, yeah. Just that's it, because you at home, so you can't just, you have a lot of time now, basically. Mm -hmm. So all you gotta do is stay on top of it, you good. Now here at Modern Day High School, I mentioned uh, right before uh, this interview that literally Modern Day is a top two team in the nation almost every single year. It's like they trade off with Bosco or uh, pretty, pretty much. And with knowing that and knowing that you're gonna be going into that environment where everybody is a top player in the nation pretty much that you're going up against and you're playing with. What is the mindset coming in there and how are you going to kind of continue to separate yourself and uh, how excited are you just to be able to play with kind of these other top talents in the nation? I'm very excited. You just gotta stay humble and just keep doing what I was doing. Yeah. Cause it's cool. This level will help me for the next level for college. Right. So it's just making my game better. Mm -hmm. So I just can't wait. And with making that decision to change to modern day and the decision that you're going to have to make with which uh, college you're going to attend after this, which college you're going to play for, obviously you have just a plethora of power five schools that you get to choose from. So uh, it's pretty great position that you've been able to put yourself in. But what is important to you that you are focusing on with maybe that decision to go to modern day or that decision to go to whichever university that you're going to play for, what's important to you in that college that you're going to look for to be able to make that move? Uh, based, uh, relationship and then how, they, how would they use me mm -hmm. as, when I go there, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw an interview, interview with you. They uh, were watching you play. Uh, it was at a seven on seven tournament and you were uh, running routes and catching the ball and everybody was saying, hey, you're one of the top receivers. You, you're looking like a top receiver there. Yeah. And you said, no, I'm a running back. So, uh, with your focus on it obviously you're focused on being a running back but have you been able to just have that dynamic game where you're able to bring in the receiving part also oh yeah um well sophomore season well both of my season freshman and uh sophomore i play uh, running back and receiver mm -hmm. so like first half i'll be a running back second half i'll be a receiver or something yeah. like that or second quarter mm -hmm. just switch yeah yeah and which positions do you kind of prefer which one do you like doing more 
I like running back, but they both fun. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely uh, 1,700 rushing yards your freshman season. You had uh, just under 1,000 in your sophomore season, but 16 touchdowns, 667 receiving yards, as well as nine receiving touchdowns. Putting up those numbers as a sophomore uh, that season, and then obviously the 1,700 as a freshman, being an underclassman in that position and putting up those numbers, were you able to kind of get respect in the locker room and how were you able to still be in an almost leadership type position while still being an underclassman? Oh yes, yeah, get a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. It just that just comes with it. Yeah. And now transitioning, as we were mentioning, to modern day, being a junior, now you're an upperclassman. What's kind of the responsibility level that you feel that you have at that? position and at that school that you can maybe uh, bring some guys on or be able to kind of be a leader in that spot? Uh, just making them get better by mm -hmm. practice, pushing yeah. them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with uh, pushing them, and I know a lot of high level athletes, they have such a high ceiling and they have, uh, you know, their work ethic that they look at. If nobody reaches their work ethic, then they're going to try to bring them along and bring them forward and some athletes might not uh, kind of go for that. So how are you able to kind of be almost another type coach and kind of bring those same athletes along with you to that same level so that you could be able to reach that uh, number one? Teaching them basically. I didn't do something wrong, just mark their mistakes and help them get better basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely in the modern day season that's going to be starting on uh, January 8th of 2021 but practices you've already been able to meet with the team yeah. so how have those practices been able to go I know there's some transfers uh, that are also happening including yourself obviously so I've been able to kind of get some chemistry flowing in so that you can be prepared for the season oh yeah that's nice so most of the teammates I know though so from seven on seven so <coughs> okay it's just it's easy so it's just basically just getting work learning the plays mm -hmm. yeah Okay, exactly. And you mentioned you already know some of your teammates uh, that you're playing seven on seven with or against. So seeing those guys that you are already able to, you know, compete against, maybe not compete at Edison, but, you know, at those camps, how does it feel to kind of get reunited with them and uh, kind of work with some of those guys? So it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be part of it, uh, come together and then make each other get better. Mm -hmm. So it's good, yeah. Definitely, and uh, you were already the number one all-purpose back in the country. Now coming into this junior year, what's one thing that you're trying to change with your game or be able to develop to maybe continue to excel this junior year? Obviously, it's a transition of you just trying to find one more thing to be able to add to your game. What is kind of that thing that you've been trying to do? Uh, just get bigger and stronger, I say. Big stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm for this big league. Yeah. yeah gotta get ready. <laughs> Definitely with the big guys. You're gonna yeah. be going up D1 level pretty soon, FBS yeah. football. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it's kind of so close and it's tangible yeah. for you, you kind of can almost reach out. You have just so many colleges to choose from. What, what was kind of your mindset going into each game, just kind of knowing each game is one step closer, each semester of high school is still one step closer. Mm -hmm. What was kind of just your mindset with that? I this is so exciting, so right. I, just, I can't wait. <laughs> right, right. I know it's going to be exciting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, once again, you could be able to catch him. It's Relique Brown. You could be able to catch him on Modern Day. Uh, he just transferred over there for his junior season. You catch him on Modern Day coming up in January 8th of 2021. That's when this football season is going to begin. And then he's obviously gonna have a senior year. So, I mean, you're just gonna get a lot of Relique Brown coming at you. And then at the FBS level, he's gonna be choosing one of his colleges of choice. So make sure that you stay tuned with him because he's gonna be making defenders look silly out there. But thank you everybody for tuning in to EBA Sports The Show. My name is Ryan Ketchum. Once again, we are here at EBA Sports Studio. Once again, thank you very much to Relique Brown for joining us today. Make sure to follow him and make sure to follow us on Instagram at EBA Sports. Make sure to like and subscribe at EBA Production on YouTube. And for more exclusive interviews with high-level athletes, make sure that you check out our series as we're going to have many more episodes of EBA Sports, the show, coming up soon. Thank you.